Hello everybody, back with a quick update on the volcanic eruption that is happening in Grindavik. Two fissures open up, one further north of the city near the small mountain Hagerfell, and actually a fissure opened up at 12 noon local time today very close to the city and the flow from that fissure is actually inundating the town. A few homes affected there. Thankfully everybody is evacuated from the town and there's only emergency workers there at the present time. Let's get into the details. You can see a picture on the screen of the recent fissure eruption. So these are long cracks that open up and the lava comes up. So in a way, it's a good thing to relieve the magma pressure and hopefully new fissures don't continue to open up, but we can relieve the magma pressure. Problem at the moment is well, we don't know, maybe a volcanologist knows better, but the estimated volume of the magma that could turn into lava at the surface, we call it lava when it's on the surface, how much erupts and where it flows, those are the key problems at the moment. So to bring you up to speed this morning, about 8 a.m. local time in Iceland, the first set of fissures opened up. You can see that here just near the Hagafell mountain. All right, this red line is the fissures and you see that it crosses. This is the barrier wall that they have made. They've made barrier walls up here to protect the power plant and the Blue Lagoon and they're protecting the city of Grindavik here. But unfortunately, the fissure opened up right through the protection dike. Now it's still functioning to some degree. You can see the lava has gone down along the wall here but we have some lava that has breached and the fissure itself has breached this barrier. Now the barrier can slow down the flow and it can still slow down the flow, I think, in its present state, even with a gaping hole in it. The lava, as it moves relatively slowly, and so that allows it time to cool down and solidify, and therefore it will actually uh, potentially will block up the hole if it actually can solidify. But if the fissure continues to erupt and more lava comes out, then it'll just continue to flow through that gap. But the most critical fissure that opened up at 12 noon local time today is this one down here. There's pictures of these homes here actually on fire from that eruption, unfortunately. One of the things as a geological engineer I start thinking about is the topography. And so where is that lava going to flow to and what can we do about it? So they've built this barrier here. It's crossing, you know, essentially this is very flat land. These lines around here are topographic lines. So they're going up the mountain here and kind of see the shading. Here's Hagerfell. Shading represents the side of the mountain. You can see the contour lines are very close together. That means that the ground is very steep or it's a big hill or mountain. But we see here it's very low lying ground and it's sort of sloping down this way towards the road. And you can see that with the flow, it comes up to the barrier and flows down towards the road. And perhaps even the road is a little bit elevated and can act as somewhat of a small barrier as well. We don't see on this map here where the lava can go, so I put it into Google Earth here. And so with Google Earth, you can see the town of Grindavik here and the harbor area. And, and here's the second fissure that opened up at noon today, and it's engulfing these homes, unfortunately. Workers are present, you can see in the live feeds, that there is a construction equipment. And so I think they're very busy in here, perhaps trying to construct other barriers to direct the flow. And I think that's the key right now is trying to direct the flow away from homes and protect them. Now, the topography in a way is a little beneficial for the population over here as long as the flow remains relatively low. And I can show you here, I've made some lines. I followed the roads because the roads would usually be fairly flat and they've been smoothed out when you construct them. So what you see along the bottom here 
this is the elevation of the ground. So you can see the red arrow tracking where I have I've got a cross section down into the earth along this green line here. The red arrow is pointing at the lowest point, okay? So the ground's kind of sloped down along this 427 road to that red arrow. That's the lowest point of land. And that kind of makes sense going into the harbor. You know, this would be a low point in the land. And I look at this topographic line here, change the elevation plot. Now you can see along here, we're basically sloping up towards this mountain here. So the ground is high ground over here. So the ground is sort of sloped all the way over towards the highway, this Highway 43. So the lava may come down along this direction and then skirt back around and come down towards the harbor this way. I've got another topographic line here that we can take a look at. And so this is a bit of a shorter run, but you can see the lowest point, so that line on the bottom is coming down towards about here. The ground wants to sort of slope down towards the highway over here, come back around through this roundabout and over to the harbor. This is a little less populated. You know, there's still homes, there's still lots of things there that, you know, unfortunately may get damaged due to the flow. but. A large part of the town, if no new fissures open up and the flow is low, perhaps the flow is going to come over here to the harbor. And the seawater will help to solidify the magma and perhaps if they're able to make more barriers, they can help direct the flow away from the home. So the greatest risk at the moment is new fissures opening up and you can listen to other volcanologists. Those are the people that really know about volcanoes. They're probably giving estimates on the volume of magma that could erupt and the volume of lava, that's when it's on the surface, the volume of lava that could uh, inundate the town. And I've seen, you know, for other volcanic eruptions, predictions of where the lava will go. Just looking at the topography, this is the direction where it's going to go. They can perhaps construct another barrier to protect some more homes. As a geological engineer, I'm thinking about how we can protect these people. Where is the lava going to go? Where is the best place to build a barrier? I'm not there on the ground, so I'm not going to get into too much of a prediction, but for the audience that may be less familiar, what I'm thinking is the flow is going to come down through this lowland, and perhaps they can build a barrier over here, and perhaps the highway itself can act as a barrier. So thanks for watching. Give it a good thumbs up. I'll try to answer your comments and come back as often as I can to give you more insight into what's happening in Grindavik, Iceland. Thanks for watching.